testing is key to beating COVID-19. Genetic material from the virus can tell us who is infected and who needs to be quarantined to stop it from spreading so fast. A person's antibodies can show us who has some immunity to the virus, so lockdowns can be lifted and people can get back to work. But trade-offs between speed, price and accuracy mean no one way is perfect. This is your COVID-19 special. I'm Chris Kober in Berlin. It is good to have you with us. Several nations have started vaccinating their citizens, but the coronavirus is far from beaten, which means detecting it is still a prime objective. A German entrepreneur and scientist has been developing ways to not only test many people quickly, cheaply, and to stop chains of infection, but to also enable folks to go on with their lives. Lufthansa flight LH-2058 is supposed to take off from Munich to Hamburg in about an hour. Travelers don't just have to show their boarding passes. They also have to show a negative test for the coronavirus. Germany's biggest airline hopes the COVID-19 tested flights program will make passengers feel comfortable flying again during the pandemic. We do believe that um Testing um, is a um, possible alternative to quarantine regulations and uh, travel restrictions. And therefore, uh, we opened this test facility and this tested flights to learn together with our customers, partners, airports, uh, the processes about testing to be ready um, once the regulators uh, open up markets again. The test center is just a few steps away. Here, medical personnel take a throat swab and analyze it using antigen rapid tests. These work by detecting proteins on the virus surface. The result is available after around 15 minutes, without the need for a laboratory. The tests are produced by companies like Pharmact. They started developing rapid tests for COVID-19 shortly after the start of the pandemic. The first step is an antibody test that uses a drop of blood to determine whether a person has had previous contact with the virus or is currently infected. Next comes the antigen test, like the one used at Lufthansa. It detects the virus directly and can determine whether someone could infect other people. We thought about how can we make tests that will function everywhere without the need for a large infrastructure behind them. Let's say in the jungle or in Southeast Asia on a small island. The goal is to be able to test many people quickly and cheaply to stop chains of infection. And to do this worldwide, even in regions that do not have a well-developed infrastructure. Pharmac started producing large numbers of tests within a few weeks, working together with a family business that usually supplies the automotive and electrical industries. The whole system can now be scaled up, so we're able to produce 300,000 units per week for Pharmact. The more automation we put into it, the more economical the whole thing also becomes in terms of production. The tests only cost a few euros, a fraction of the more common PCR tests that can only be evaluated in a laboratory. At Munich Airport, all the passengers have now completed their coronavirus rapid tests. And after a few minutes, they get the results back. Reliability is between 95 and 98 percent. And we're currently verifying that by retesting each sample with a PCR test. The tested flight's concept seems well received by passengers. I think it's OK, certainly as an alternative to not traveling. The whole process was quick, you have your result in 10 minutes. I don't have anything negative with this, uh, with this test and all. I think it's better for the people, it's better for the whole community who are flying here. What works for getting on a plane could also make major events, such as concerts, football games, or just going to the cinema, possible again. Because the coronavirus pandemic is likely to be with us for some time, despite the availability of vaccines. So knowing whether you have caught the virus or not will remain 
Important information, of course. For more on this, let's bring in Marcus Hippie. He is a biologist at the German Research Center for Environmental Health. He joins me via Skype from Munich. Welcome to DW, Marcus. When it comes to the antibody test, many people, to most, to most of them, the most important question is, does a positive test result mean I'm immune? So if you're immune to the virus, this, um, this point of care antibody tests cannot tell you because um, if you're, if, to say if you're immune, you have to do a neutralization assay where you can prove that your antibody prevents the virus from entering um, your cells. Huh. Uh, until now, antibody tests have not been considered particularly reliable. That's why you used a new method on a large-scale study. What did that look like? So there, there are also some um, point-of-care tests that are reliable. What we did, um, we did look for, for antibodies that appear later in the disease and especially what we what our method looked like was that we did a two-stage test. So we did a screening um, test and then a confirmation test again for antibodies against two different um, proteins of SARS-CoV-2. And the special thing about this is that we reach a specificity of 100%, meaning that we do not detect any false positives. So we really report the true prevalence. Hmm. And tell us more uh, on the result of your study. So we um, sc uh, screened children in Bavaria, Germany, aged 1 to 18 years. And what we found from January 2020 through July was a um, six-fold higher prevalence of antibodies as compared um, to the reported cases. And also half of the children that had antibodies um, were asymptomatic. Hmm. Now, does a higher incidence of antibodies in the population mean that more people are already immune to the virus? It's like in, in the first question, and you know is the, is the short answer, but um, if you test, if you do these neutralization assays and you can prove that especially these antibodies you're testing, uh, and that they also confer immunity, then in principle, this is right. The more people um, have these immunizing antibodies, then of course, the more people are immune. But hmm. from a, a single antibody test without this neutralization, I'd say you cannot conclude this. In recent weeks, infection numbers have been rising to very high levels here in Germany. What do you think is the reason for that? So I think the, the reason is that there are really are more infections and more or less the transmission of infection got out of control, not like it was in, during the summer with lower numbers where backtracing was also possible. This is not possible anymore. And of course, there's also more testing, but also the positive rate goes up. So it's not just the number of tests that goes up. There really are more infections. Marcus Hippich of the German Research Center for Environmental Health. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. So we know some more about the different methods of COVID testing than we did at the start of the show. But there are questions remaining, and that's when our science correspondent, Derek Williams, is happy to jump in. Is it possible to test positive for COVID-19 and its antibodies at the same time? Tricky question. To answer it, um, we need a quick refresher on the terminology. Uh, antibodies are immune system proteins that can be detected by what are called serological tests, uh, generally from blood samples. If you have antibodies that are specific to COVID-19, that indicates that you were exposed to the coronavirus at some point in the past, uh, whether you developed symptoms or not. Diagnostics like antigen and PCR tests, on the other hand, are for detecting the virus or its genetic material. So they're supposed to tell you whether you have an active infection. This question therefore basically boils down to, uh, can I have an active infection, yet at the same time be producing detectable amounts of antibodies against it? Yes, 
you can, but, but finding both involves getting the timing right. Um, that's because there's some overlap between when an infection is in full swing and the ramp up of the body's immune response. Um, in general, experts say it takes a patient's body between one and three weeks to produce detectable amounts of the different antibodies that play a key role in fighting off COVID-19. Um, researchers in New York found that even patients producing antibodies in those measurable amounts, however, could continue to test positive for the virus for up to four weeks after their symptoms resolved. Um, what the team couldn't determine, though, was whether that viral genetic material was actually coming from active viable virus. Um, PCR testing doesn't tell you that, although that's really what you want to know. It just tells you whether there are intact pieces of viral RNA in a sample. Do you have a question for Derek? Well, just send an email to feedback.english at dw.com and type expert in the subject line or leave a comment on our YouTube channel. Now, before we let you go, here's a story about adapting traditions to today's realities. Germany's seasonal Christmas markets called off due to coronavirus restrictions. drive through options have been popping up across the country. In Kalkar, near the, near the Dutch border, a family theme park has been transformed into a winter wonderland complete with artificial snow, mulled wine and music. Cars follow a two and a half kilometer route past illuminated stands selling sausages, crafts and roasted almonds. Under new lockdown rules in Germany, the Christmas market will be allowed to remain open as long as the stalls only sell food for consumption in vehicles.